a buddy of mine called me over to his man cave on Sunday about a carburetor problem. What is that, a casting couch? <laughs> That's the running <laughs> You may remember Sebastian from a recent video where I loaned him my 950 ATM E85 carburetor to try out on his Ford pickup. Well, he liked my carburetor so much, he bought one for himself, but now he claims there's a problem. So you got your new carburetor put on this thing. I did. And now you're having trouble. I had nothing but bad luck, and it's not even carb related, half of it. My starter grenaded. That was impressive. This starter's already taking a crap on me. It's just everything's been bad. But no, the truck, it's it's got some tweaks it needs done. You know what the problem is? It's got a forward motor in it. It's got a forward motor in it. They cert oh. They didn't circle it. And they just printed it on the hood. You circled it on the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Tricked you with the grill, didn't I? <laughs> I told Sebastian to go ahead and fire up this big block Ford so that I could listen to it and check it out. The truck fired right up, no problem. Throttle response is good. And then all of a sudden, for no apparent reason, the engine dies as soon as I turn my camera off. Is this shut off? Yeah. Just shut off completely on its own? Magic. Magic. I get that from my dad. Crank it over and let me see what's going on here. Huh? That's the up now. Oh my goodness. Once we got his old Ford to fire back up, it sat there and ran for the next 10 minutes without a problem. So I decided to take a ride around the block with him and see if I could figure out what he's talking about. He claims that the carburetor is causing the truck to surge on acceleration. That's ignition. I know. I'm calling MSD in air trouble. <laughs> it ain't the carburetor. About 90% of the time when I get a phone call about a carburetor problem, it turns out to be an ignition problem. In this instance, the high side rev limiter seems to be engaging way too early. So I had Sebastian turn it all the way up and try it again. Still doing the same thing. gonna try and send the ignition box back to MSD and get it replaced and I think I've convinced him that the problem is not the carburetor. Fall is definitely here and the weather is turning. We're patiently waiting for the concrete to cure inside the new shop so we can start putting the cars away and get them out of the weather. We've got quite a bit of work to do on the cars this week to get them ready for this weekend for the Jack's Wax Street Madness event at National Trail Raceway. Billy has the transmission pulled out of his S10. The Malibu needs a bath and detailed. And my Nova? Well, it's got that new 427 giveaway engine in it. And since the engine was built for nitrous, our friends at Nitrous Express wanted to make sure that this engine is properly equipped for whoever wins it. So first thing Monday, Robbie got busy installing a new nitrous kit on my Nova so we can get it all dialed in for the winter. While Robbie's working on that back at the shop, I loaded up a bunch of nitrous bottles in the back of Vicky's Suburban and headed into Jeg's to visit Uncle Terry. It's been so long since we made any nitrous passes, I can't remember which bottles are filled and which ones need topped off. Once Terry got all our bottles filled up, he jumped on the computer and started pulling up a parts list of stuff I need. 3 8 rocker arms for the 383, stud girdles, push rods, American made by the way, some intake bolts for Billy's Windsor, and a handful of other little things that Bob needs up at the machine shop. We packed everything in the back of Vicky's Suburban and then I headed straight up to Bob's on Tuesday morning in the Malibu. I haven't driven this car much recently, and I haven't had the secondaries hooked up on the carburetor in over a month. So we need to get that taken care of so that we can possibly make some nitrous passes on the Malibu this weekend as well. Outside of just hooking up the secondary linkage on the carburetor and giving the car a bath, I think it's pretty well ready to go. If I spray the Malibu this weekend, I'll probably just spray one kit or the other and not both. 
Bob's already got enough work to do up here at the machine shop, and he definitely doesn't need any more problems. Bob was busier than a one-arm wallpaper hanger when I got there. An old LT was up there working this morning too, taking apart that six liter from House of Pearls, so I decided to go over and do a little interview. What are you doing, LT? I'm going the other way. <laughs> Did you win any car shows lately? No, I won't. No new any. trophies? No. Did you sell your El Camino? No. Did you buy something else? No. You're working on it. <laughs> no. Oh, your wife watches this, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> so how are we coming on the 383, Bob? Well, we're doing real well. We're missing a few parts here and there. If we can get them gathered up and get to, we'll get this thing together and get on the dyno and just break it in. And, Get it running. We had to go through the heads. Yes, sir. Uh, put all new valves in them. Yep, the old ones were tulips. Whoa, that was cool. Yeah, how do you make those clicking sounds? Obviously, when they built this engine as a crate motor, they didn't build it for what Billy was doing, <laughs> what with, Billy it. Was doing with it. We took the heads apart, did a complete valve job, replaced all the valves, put heavy duty valves in them. Yep. And uh, replaced the seven degree locks and retainers with 10 degree locks and retainers. And up specifically for that OMG 79 cam. Yes. Same cam that's in my Malibu, same cam that's in the 427. That same cam will be in this 383 on boost. Yes. That's going to be interesting because that cam is pretty radical in a 421 and in a 427. I can't imagine what it'll sound like in a 383. Well, actually, this is a 385 because it's 40, 40 over. Yeah. So we're getting head gaskets on the way. You ordered those today. The heads are just about ready to go back on. As soon as we get head gaskets, we need head studs, don't we? Oh, okay. You didn't have them in the stock. I didn't have them. We all call Bruce. All right, call Bruce and see if we can get some head studs for this thing. And you got head gaskets coming. Yep. Do we have intake gaskets? Yeah. And then I noticed on these heads, the intake bolt holes go down into the water jacket. So we definitely want to seal the intake bolts with thread sealant because when we had it in my Nova, I noticed that I would occasionally see water laying up on top of the intake manifold, you know, in between the gasket. Right. And that's what it was. I, you know, nobody ever sealed those threads. I didn't realize that those aren't blind holes. They go straight down into the water jacket. So <sighs> it's always something. Hey, you know what? What? I forgot about that Trans Am. That's all right, we've been busy. We have been busy. We need to get up here and get that done tomorrow tomorrow because it looks like the weather is going to be decent tomorrow all right i'll bring my carburetor stuff up tomorrow we'll I'll do see it you tomorrow. i had almost forgotten about that trans am but we've definitely got to get it taken care of before the weather gets any worse all right guys so if you remember a few videos back uh bob had a friend of the family drop that trans am off up at his house and <laughs> once again Carburetor has problems. That was the claim. And in reality, it was really just an ignition timing problem for the most part. I've been really busy and the weather's been crap here lately, so I haven't really had time to go up there and work on that Trans Am. But the weather's supposed to be really nice today and the owner wants to come and get that car and get it put back in storage before the weather turns any worse. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up some stuff here and head towards Bob's. So I got a timing light and a few hand tools. I got my Holly Jet kit. I got an assortment of power valves. I went through these last night and I've got plenty of bowl gaskets and I've got some metering block gaskets here just in case we tear something. Got my handy power valve tool. Got my jet tool. I think really that's about all I'm gonna need to do this. So I'm gonna throw this stuff in the 55 and we're gonna head to Uncle Bob's. Given the weather forecast, I'm not going to miss an opportunity to go for a ride in the 55, although June wasn't as fortunate. I put my two associates back in the house, jumped in the 55, and start making my way north up towards the machine shop. Bob actually drove the Trans Am from his house down this morning and put it inside so it's ready to go as soon as I get there. 
The owner of the Trans Am is a close family friend, and Bob's excited for me to try and help this guy get this car dialed in so he can enjoy it for what's left of this season. God only knows how many days like this we've got left this year before the snow flies and the salt gets on the roads. Once that happens, there won't be any more cruising the 55 or the Malibu, unless, of course, we head south. Maybe a trip down to the Carolinas, Georgia, or maybe even all the way to Florida. It's hard to tell where we might end up this winter. All right, so if you remember right, uh, the last time we looked at this car, it had an HEI distributor in it and uh, the timing wasn't locked out, the yada, yada, yada. So Bob's already put an MSD distributor in it for me and already locked the timing out, meaning that the mechanical advance is locked out. There is no advance. So whatever you set the timing at, at idle, is where it's at. So I've gone ahead and got my timing light hooked up here. We're gonna fire this thing up and just see how it sounds and see where the ignition timing is. Bob drove it up here to the shop this morning from his house and he said it run fine, you know, idled fine. He didn't drive it fast, it just right up the road. Um, but he said it obviously stayed running, <laughs> uh, which is more than what it would do before. So let's fire it up and see where the timing's at and see what it sounds like. The cold start wasn't too bad, and it didn't give too much trouble to keep it running. However, it doesn't sound right. It sounds to me like the car has too much timing in it. It doesn't have very good rhythm. So obviously that's a little too much timing. I noticed when I went to start it, it kind of kicked back on the starter just a little bit. So I went ahead and dialed it back to 36 degrees. You see, uh, need to turn the idle down just a little bit, make some adjustments on the carburetor. So we got this thing sitting here running. Sounds really good. Sitting here idling just like it should, about 880, 900 RPM. Cam sounds really good in it. And other than changing the idle speed, I have not yet touched the carburetor. So far, so good. Let's uh, drop this thing in gear and see if it dies. Not bad. Let's take it up the road. So far, so good. This is pretty typical of every call I ever get about a carburetor problem. Everything is always blamed on the carburetor first. All right, we got it in low gear. Let's crack it. <laughs> Seems to run pretty good. <laughs> After my quick initial test drive, I brought the car back to the shop and pulled the carburetor part and swapped out the stock 6.5 power valve for a 7.5, just to help bring the fuel curve in a little earlier. Then it was time to put the shaker hood scoop back on and take it for another test drive just to be sure that the shaker hood scoop didn't change the carburetor tune or cause any restrictions to the engine. The customer bought this 400 cubic inch small block Chevy built and dynoed by Blueprint Engines. The car only has about 480 miles on the odometer since it was restored. And of those 480 miles, the car has never run the way it should. So when the customer comes to pick this thing up, I'd really like to surprise him with a full tank of high test gas and a hot running Trans Am. So I drove it up to Martinsburg and topped the fuel tank off and took some video of the Trans Am in its natural habitat. Pictures and video of this Trans Am simply don't do it justice. It's literally the tightest, cleanest, most beautiful second gen F body I've ever seen or ridden in. And now this one 
runs as good as it looks. On the way back to Bob's shop, I realized there's one thing left I need to take care of. I need to figure out the wiring on the tachometer. Thankfully, it was just a wire that Bob hadn't hooked up yet, and I had it fixed before the customer came to pick the car up. How's it going? Excellent. I got your car straightened up. That's even better. <laughs> Tell me about this car. How long have you had this thing? I've had it for four years now. Really? Went to Texas and bought it uh, during COVID. Really? Yes, and uh, Buddy and I took off and went down over a weekend, picked it up, brought it back. It was black. It was a Smokey and the Bandit car. Really? And then we uh, turned it into this. <laughs> well, it is absolutely gorgeous. It must have been pretty rust-free because that car is tight as a drum. Well, everything underneath, as you probably saw, is new. The frame. Oh, really? Uh, the rear end's got a Ford 9-inch in it. I know really? a lot of people, the Pontiac guys will yell at me for that. But, uh, <laughs> well, they'd probably be more upset about that 400-small-block Chevy. 400 Chevy but. Yes, yes. But, you know, I built this car. Uh, I had a car just like this in high school. This one I built just the way it was, except for the motor and everything, and really? hopefully this time I won't tear it up. <laughs> so, how much have you gotten to drive this thing? I think the mileage is on it, 400 miles. Really? That's it. You don't drive it very often? I don't drive it very often. Just got it back. It took almost three years to get it to this. Oh, really? Yes. And so, that, how, how well did it drive? Bob said it wouldn't hardly move or stay it, running. It would not idle. Uh, once I got going, it was okay, uh -huh. but it still didn't have, I mean, for supposedly having a 500 horse engine, it didn't have much oomph to it. Uh -huh. So I'm hoping that you guys were able to work some magic. Yep. Well, let's take it for a ride and see what you think. Let's do that. Do well, I need to pump it or anything to get her? I don't know. Just hit the key, see what it does. Is that a little different? Oh, much different. <laughs> Before I had to pump it and pump it and pump it and then sit here until it warmed up. Right. And, and then most of the time it would stay running until I put it in gear. <laughs> well, try it. Oh, yes. Much, much better. Let's go out here and hang a left. All right. way down pull it back into low gear just go from a roll just a little bit of a roll and just kick it wide open of it was the ignition timing. So 99.9% .9 of it was just the ignition timing. So when you when you put an engine in a car that's got a relatively hot camshaft like that one, you can't really put the stock distributor in it with the stock ignition timing and the stock advanced curve and all that. It just doesn't work. Okay. So all we did was put an MSD distributor in it, lock the timing out, and set the ignition timing at 36 degrees. And I did replace the power valve and the carburetor uh, I went up one number on the power valve just to bring the fuel curve in a little quicker so that it doesn't have a stumble. It That's doesn't it. have a stumble. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Very impressive. Well, now you can go cruise around and do burnouts and have all kinds of fun. 
I am gonna do some fun, have some fun. <laughs> Well, it's your time to shine. <laughs> Is that what? I guess. All right. What okay. do you got for me, Squirrel? Let's talk about the new shirts that you designed up. They're pretty cool. These are for the 427 small block Chevy giveaway engine that's in my Nova. Okay, so every item, whether it's a shirt or a hoodie, ordered the new 427 design counts towards an entry so if you buy one shirt and one hoodie you got two entries into the 427 giveaway i have some news that i don't know well i don't know if you know it or not <laughs> nitrous express came on board we put this nitrous kit on see you I don't know, know everything <laughs> yeah you don't know everything nitrous express came on board and they said well since that engine was built for nitrous it should be equipped with a nitrous kit when you give it away. Well, I mean, you makes sense. Yeah, so Robbie's been working on the Nova. It's not quite done. Uh, put a standalone in it. Got the nitrous bottle mounted, the Max 5 controllers in the car. Uh, the nitrous kit's on. There's just a little bit of wiring left to do and some tidying up, making stuff nice and neat. No mm -hmm. big deal. Uh, so I don't know if I'm going to get to spray it this weekend. The last thing I need to do is take that 427 down there and injure it. In a hurry. In a hurry. Right. So. Ixnay on that. <laughs> yeah. But just, I will. Yeah. But I am going to get it. I just, I need some time to verify that it's pulling timing and I need to flow the fuel side. There's a lot of things like I can't just rush into that mm -hmm. and hurt that engine. So I don't no. know. Probably not going to get to spray it this weekend. But it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> and I have more. So. Bubba Rafferty at Perfect Converter Company, mm -hmm. who builds all our converters, mm -hmm. has stepped up to build a custom converter for that engine based on the winner's transmission. So whatever oh, they have, cool. yeah, because we don't know what transmission right. they're going to have, right? Might be a Turbo 350, 400 Power Glide, 700 R4, Ford All 80E. So he's kind of going to custom do what they need. He's going to custom build a converter based on the dyno sheets for this engine. And it goes with it as well. That's pretty cool. But there's more. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you ready for this? I'm ready. ATM. Yeah. It's going with a brand new gas or E85 carburetor. Holy cow. The gas carburetor is already on its way. It's on E85 right now, but I'm going to put it on pump gas mm -hmm. and tune it for pump gas just in case the winner happens to be someplace where they can't get E85 and right. they want to run it on pump gas. They're ready to go. I'll have it tuned and all dialed in. Gosh, that's all, like good news, good news, good news. Bad news, here it comes. You ready? What? I don't have any. Oh. <laughs> Just... <laughs> I have something that you don't know. What? <laughs> We're going to see Jimmy Dale this weekend. We're going to see Jimmy Dale this weekend. Yes. Oh, okay. no. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. Don't chipmunk me. <laughs> so this Saturday is the Jack's Wax Street Madness Halloween edition. Oh, shit. He called me, and he was trying to tell me this. I'm like, Jimmy, I don't have time right now, and I hung up on well, him. Well, he told me. <gasps> so we're going to be at this event, and Jimmy is flying to go get himself a new car to North Carolina. He's going to then drive that car from North Carolina to Ohio and come hang out at the Jack's Wax event. Nice. Hang out. Goof off. Eat so it's a chicken. Jimmy Dale Halloween weekend. It's a Jimmy Dale Halloween edition weekend. I'm sure he will be in full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full form. Anyway, I'm excited to see him. Also, the couple, the the, the guy who won spending a day with us. Right, right. Uh, Tim House. He and his wife are coming to hang with us all day at the track for that event. Nice. He has a cool 66 C10. You showed me pictures of yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's neat. He's going to bring it out. We're going to, you know. Maybe he might want to get in a little grudge race with a 64 C10. I've got another nitrous kit. <laughs> we only have one day, honey. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but yeah, it's just like. There's a lot going on. This weekend should be a blast. Let me give the details, okay? Quickly. So, gates are at 4. This is at National Trail Raceway. It's supposed to be Saturday, but the rain date is Sunday. So, if, if it, rains it rains on Saturday. But, um, I talked to the head dude, and he says he thinks the rain's going to pass through. And by the time... The head four, dude would be Jack Miner, the owner of Jack's Wax. Yes. 
The you, head dude You couldn't in charge. remember his name. Admit it. You couldn't remember his name. No, I'm saying you the head guy in charge. <laughs> <laughs> he said she drew he a thinks blank. It's okay. That, I do it he too. He thinks that um the rain's going to pass through early in the day and we should be fine. Okay. But if it doesn't, they're going to move it to Sunday. All right. But follow me on Facebook and I'll let everybody know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm not going to say that. I'm definitely saying that. Next, uh it costs $15 to get in. Kids 12 and under are free. It's like a car show. You can race, like you can drag race. There's burnout contest. There's trick or treating. Bring your kids. They can go pit to pit like and get candy. I have a huge tub of candy to hand out. It's going to be a good time. Are we done? No. Next weekend, October 28th, Little teaser here. We're going to Oklahoma. <laughs> we haven't been out to Oklahoma in quite a while, like five years. But, and Tommy never has. Billy's been, but not Tommy. So I'm excited. We're going to the H-Town Throwdown, which is in Hartshorn, Oklahoma. And uh, I will give more, more detailed info on the next video. But for now, that's it. <laughs>